This is March 2018, paper 22. March 2018, paper 22. Okay. The graph shows a sketch of the first ionization energies of six successive elements in the periodic table. The letters are not the symbols of the elements. Explain what is meant by the term first ionization energy. So the ionization energy is the energy needed. It's always endothermic, right? To remove one mole of electrons, right? One mole of electrons, right? From one mole of gaseous atoms. Right. And obviously you're forming to form one plus gaseous ions. I'll write that in parentheses. Okay. So really the key, the key points over here are energy needed, one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms. Okay. Suggest why the first ionization energy of B is much less than that of A. So we have six successive elements. Acha, tell me just by looking at this graph, which group do you think element A belongs to? Okay. Iske element mein itna bada drop aa gaya. So which group do you think element A belongs to? Noble gases, right? But across the period, basically A se pehle bardi thi, yahan tak bardi aur phir achanak se kam ho gai. So across the period, it was generally increasing and then we went to the next period. So that means A is a noble gas and B is the next element, which is in group one. Now, so then why is B much lesser than A? And why is this of three marks? Why is this of three marks? Because you have to explain, right? Like, period next period Shells When I have more shells, yes. So we will say that distance between that. Yes, exactly. So the swelling and all of those. Exactly. So we can say that the the number of shells, the number of shells increases. Right. Which means that means that the outer electron, the outer electron is further away from the nucleus, further away from the nucleus and experiences greater shielding or repulsion from inner electron, experiences more shielding or repulsion from inner electrons. Right? Shells increases from, I'll write this down now. So, number of shells increases from A to B. Which means that the outer electrons, outer electron is further away and experiences more shielding. Hence, it is less attracted to the nucleus. Less attracted to the nucleus, so it's easier to remove. So it's easier to remove. Right? You don't have to say, so it's easier to remove because that's in the question. It's P is much less than, All right, so that's the explanation. P to T are successive elements in the period, in period three of the periodic table. So in period three, we have successive elements. The letters are not the symbols of the elements. On this axis sketch a graph show the trend of the atomic radius. So what happens to the radius across the period? It decreases. It decreases, right? So the trend is just from P to T, the radius will decrease. So you just have to draw a straight line showing a decrease in atomic radius. Same number, yes, absolutely. The explanation is, as uh, Roha is mentioning, right? Okay, this, the number of shells remains the same, but the nuclear charge increases. So the outer electron is, yes, so. 
across the period, right? Across the period, the number of shells, the nuclear charge increases. Right. However, the number of shells remains the same. Hence, the outer electrons are more strongly attracted to the nucleus. Hence, outer electrons are more strongly attracted and therefore obviously held closer and therefore held closer to the nucleus. All right, so that's a good three, nine marks for just knowing your periodic trends. Next question. And I'll be pausing. All right. Carbon and silicon are atoms in group 14. C60 and diamond are allotropes of carbon. Describe the lattice structure of solid C60. So first of all, any solid is a lattice. Okay. C60 is a lattice. Hota hai? Molecular so formula. This can, uh... Iska naam kya so, iska naam Buck Minister nahi hota. Buck ah, Minister this is the Fulleri. best, my favorite, my favorite name in chemistry. This is Buckminster Fullerene. It's that football shaped molecule of carbon. So it's a simple molecule. It's a simple molecule. Not minister, it's minster. Okay. But yes, Buckminster Fullerene. So this is a, so this is a simple molecular structure. It's an allotrope of carbon. And if you had to describe the lattice structure, you would say in a lattice structure, it is a simple molecular lattice, right? Where the me molecules, where molecules are held together, right? In a regular arrangement or in a, because solids are, in a regular arrangement. Now you don't have to talk about the electrons being localized here because the question is about the lattice structure, not about the delocalization. But that's a good point. Something that you guys should know is that Buckminster Fullerene is a carbon atom, hai na, wo sp2. Hai, se graphite mein hai. So within the molecule, the electrons are delocalized. Within the molecule, the electrons are delocalized. But it doesn't conduct electricity. The reason why it doesn't conduct electricity is because, because what happens is that from one molecule to the next, it can't conduct. So within the molecule, to localize it, but in a sample, graphite sample, mein kya hai? all the carbons are interconnected. So the electrons can conduct across the entire sheet. Whereas in Buckminster Fullerene, there's delocalization within the molecule. However, elect so electrons are free to move within this 60 carbon molecule, but they're not free to move from one molecule to the next. Hence, we say that it doesn't conduct electricity, unlike graphite, which does conduct electricity. C60 sublimes at about 800 Kelvin. Diamond also sublimes, but only at above 3800 Kelvin. Explain why C60 and diamond sublime at such different temperatures. We just said that C60 has a simple molecular lattice. So what kinds of intermolecular forces are there? So non-polar. Van der Waals force to induce dipole. Whereas diamond may you have covalent bonds, right? Giant covalent structure. So, so the, the molecules in C60 are held together by weak van der Waals forces or intermolecular forces due to induced dipoles, right? Whereas, whereas 
diamond exists as a giant covalent structure right right these covalent bonds so the the covalent bonds in diamonds have to be broken have to be broken okay which requires which are much stronger which are much stronger than these covalent bonds i'll write it like this these covalent bonds which have to be broken are much stronger are much stronger than the intermolecular forces than imf in in c60 hence more energy is required and something i want everyone to remember is that covalent bonds are actually stronger than ionic bonds covalent bonds are actually stronger than ionic bonds it's just that normally jo simple molecule hoti hai usme hum logo ko sirf physical bonds break karna hota hai simple molecules mein which is why the highest melting points that you see will be things like diamond and graphite unke ionic se bhi zyada high melting points right simple molecules you don't have to break the covalent bonds in order to vaporize them in simple molecules all right c60 forms hydrocarbons with similar chemical properties to those of alkenes alkenes one such hydrocarbon is c60h18 state what is meant by the term hydrocarbon what's hydrocarbon molecule which contains only hydrogen and carbon exactly so a compound made up of only hydrogen and carbon atoms compound so like alkenes alkanes etc made up of only carbon and or consisting of only carbon and hydrogen atoms describe a test to indicate the presence of double bonds between carbon atoms in c60h18 give the result of this test so they're saying agar isme double bonds hote agar isme double bonds hote to wo kya test use karte aqueous bromine aqueous bromine yes and what would the result of this decolorization from brown to colorless brown to kya keh rahe hain and solution goes from solution terms that that press the solution goes from brown to colorless okay 0.144 grams of c60 was placed in a 100 cm cube container of hydrogen gas at 20 degrees celsius and 1 times 10 to the power of 5 which is 100000 pascals the container was made was heated to make c60 and hydrogen gas react okay the reaction occurred as shown in the equation after the reaction the container was allowed to cool to 20 degrees celsius okay and the pressure decreased to 2.21 times 10 to the power of 4 pascals all of the c60 had reacted name the type of reaction that occurred so if i'm adding hydrogen what type of a reaction reduction right just as alkenes ki hoti thi we have reduction and what's the amount in moles of c60 that reacted we have to calculate that 
So how do we calculate that? So grams DA. Grams DA, right? Point one four four grams. So I can say that the number of moles is just the mass over the molar mass, which is zero point one four four divided by carbon ka twelve hota hai, so twelve times sixty. So that's how many carbon atoms we have. Okay. One four four. So zero point three zero is two. Zero point three zero then a two. Zero point zero 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 two, which is two times ten to the power of minus four. Okay. Calculate the amount in moles of hydrogen gas that reacted with the C sixty. Now my question is this. हम लोगों को पता है ट्वेंट हम लोगों को कंडीशंस दी हैं जिसमें हाइड्रोजन गैस and they've given us the volume of the container as well so we know how much volume we have of gas we know the temperature we know the pressure right c60 is a solid at 20 degrees celsius so then so all the volume is just occupied by this only gas right so can i find the number of moles of hydrogen right what expression will relate all three of these quantities p equals to n r t ideal gas equation and we know that the pressure is in pascals remember pressure hamesha pascals mein lenge is equation mein so we have 1 times 10 to the power of 5 the volume is 100 cm cube which is 100, 100 divided by 10 to the power of 6 okay yes 1 meter cube is 10 to the power of 6 cm cube or a million cm cube okay so we have to convert it to meter cube so that's 100 10 to the power, over 10 to the power of 6 that's equal to the number of moles which we have to find right and the ideal gas constant is 8.31 joules per mole per kelvin and the temperature is 20 degrees celsius which is 273 plus 20 which is 293 kelvin so times 293 so then if we do the math what do we get for number of moles 4.11 the... into We get n ten over eight point three one times two ninety three. ये क्या है? हाँ क्या कह रहे थे? Root ten power minus three. क्या चीज़? Point one one. हाँ. Four point one one into ten power minus three. Four point one one times ten to the power minus three. Okay, so we have four point one one times ten to the power of minus three. All right. So this is the amount of hydrogen gas I had initially. This is the amount of gas I had initially, and I had some gas left over, didn't I? So the pressure it decreased. So I had some gas left over. So this is initial. This is initial. Or final? What was it? Final. Me exact same thing will be, but. What we have is the final pressure is two point two one times ten to the power of four pascals, right? P times the volume is the same again, hundred times a hundred over ten to the power of six. We had this was how much hydrogen gas we had initially, and we had some gas left over at the end. So because hydrogen was in excess, so how much was left over at the end? That's again P V equals N R T. So that's Eight point three one times n times again the temperature is the same, so ये क्या value आ रही है? N comes out to what? Nine point zero eight into ten power minus four. Okay, so two point three one divided by, uh, sorry, two point two one आते हैं. Two point two one divided by, uh, eight point three one times two ninety three. तो ये कितना आ रहा है? Nine point zero eight into ten to the power of minus minus four. So the difference between the two, the difference between the two is how much actually reacted. This is how much was left over. This is how much we started with. So that's four point one one times ten to the power of minus three minus nine point zero eight times ten to the power of minus four. So what's the difference? So the difference is three point two 
Use your answers from part two and three to deduce the molecular formula of the hydrocarbon. So now we know how many moles of hydrogen we have, hydrogen gas. If you notice, we had zero point, we had two times 10 to the power of minus four moles of C60 and 3.2 times 10 to the power of minus three moles of hydrogen gas. So what's the ratio between the two? How many moles of hydrogen were needed? How many moles of hydrogen gas were needed? H2 ke maare paas hai 3.2 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Or hamaare paas C60 ke kitne de? 2 times 10 to the power of minus 4. Or iske hamaare 1 mole ke liye kitne mole chahiye hydrogen gas ke? Because yahaan par hamaare paas 1 mole. Right? So that's the ratio. 1 is to x. So what does x come out to? x is equal to 16. 16. Yes, x is equal to 16. If you cross multiply, you get x is equal to 16. So 16 moles of hydrogen gas were needed. That means how many hydrogen atoms do I have? 2 times 16. So that's 32. Right? Because formula make it 2x. So I can say that a molecular formula is just C60H32. Silicon shows the same type of bonding and structure as diamond. State the type of bonding and the structure shown by silicon. So the type of bonding is covalent and the type of structure is giant. So it is a giant molecular covalent structure, right? Giant covalent structure. Right? So you get one mark for giant and one mark for covalent, essentially. You can also say it's a macro giant or macro molecular structure that contains covalent bonds. Same thing. Okay. When silicon reacts with magnesium, Mg2Si is formed. Mg2Si is thought to contain the Si4 minus ion. State the full electronic configuration of the Si4 minus ion. Now, self silicon has 14 electrons. So, yes. So, silicon is group. Mein? Silicon is 14 electrons. Okay, group 14 is not. Okay, carbon is not. This is where silicon is. Right here. Where is it? Where is carbon? Group 14. Okay. So, it will end with P2. 2P2. 3P2, sorry. So, if you have electron gain, it will have 18 electrons. Same as car argon, right? 8, 2, 3, 4. Same as argon. So it actually goes from 3p2 to Si4 minus as 18 electrons. So we will have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and now 3p2 say ye ho gaye, 3p6. Because well, it's gained, it's gained four electrons. Solid Mg2Si reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid to form gaseous silicon hydride and a solution of magnesium chloride. Write an equation to show the reaction of M magnesium silicide with dilute hydrochloric acid. So they've told us that this guy, when it reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid, it forms gaseous SiH4 and magnesium chloride, a solution of magnesium chloride. So with state symbols, what we have is, what we have is Mg2Si reacts with HCl to form magnesium chloride. Mg is 2 plus chloride is 1 minus. So that's MgCl2, okay, plus 
SiH4. So that's your equation. We have to balance this. To balance it, all you need is two HCLs. Sorry, not two HCLs. You're going to need four HCLs. Four HCLs. Because here there are four hydrogen. We have four HCL. Four is to one. And now we have two chlorines here. And one magnesium. Here there are two magnesium and four chlorine. So this will become two MgCl2. So that's the balanced equation. Now we have same number of magnesiums, chlorines, and hydrogens, and silicons, right? So what are the state symbols? Yes, yes, solid. So that says solid aqueous gas, aqueous. Aqueous solution of magnesium chloride, which means aqueous, and then gaseous silicon hydride. Predict the shape of the SiH4 molecule. It's identical to methane, carbon bonded to four hydrogens. So what will the shape be? Tetrahedral. Tetrahedral. So we have a tetrahedral shape here. And SiH4 reacts spontaneously with oxygen to produce, to produce a white solid and a colorless liquid that turns anhydrous copper sulfate blue. Turns anhydrous copper sulfate blue. Okay. Write an equation for the reaction of SiH4 with oxygen. Okay, now this is a very silly question. Okay, आप ये बताओ कि anhydrous copper अच्छा जो copper sulfate का blue solution होता है, it's hydrated copper sulfate. तो क्या चीज क्या चीज anhydrous को hydrated बनाती है? पानी. Water. Or white solid हाँ exactly. Or white solid कौन सा बन रहा होगा? Silicon dioxide, right? Or silicon four oxide. Yes, yes, yes. SiO2. So what we have is SiH4 reacts with oxygen to produce silicon dioxide and water. That's what they were trying to say here. Okay. And state symbols aren't required, so we won't write the state symbols. We have to balance this, right? So what do we have? We have four hydrogens here, so two H2O. Now we have four hydrogens on both sides, and now we need two O2 to balance it. Four oxygens on the right, so we're going to need four oxygens on the left. So that was like a nice sort of a twenty-two mark question. Forty percent, guys. Forty percent for knowing this stuff. Sir, A to इसी में आ जाएगा. हाँ, A तो इसी में हाँ. यही पर यही चैप्टर पढ़ के जाना था. बाकी सारे छोड़ दो. सही ना? फिर मैं देखता हूँ तुम्हारा A क्या साथ है. सही. हाँ. आएगा आएगा इन्शाल्लाह. इन्शाल्लाह आएगा. Calcium and its compounds have a large variety of applications. Write an equation for the reaction of calcium with dilute nitric acid. So calcium with dilute nitric acid. Now, what does calcium react with acid to produce? A reactive metal with an acid. Salt and hydrogen gas. Good. So we're going to form calcium nitrate and hydrogen gas. Right. So what we need is we're gonna need two of these guys because we have two hydrogens and two nitrates over here, and that's your balanced equation. Okay. When calcium, we're not decomposing calcium nitrate here, so huh? we're actually just it's an acid and calcium. No? We're not heating nitrate. It's my oxide one, obviously. When calcium metal is placed in dilute sulfuric acid, it reacts vigorously at first. After a short time, O level का सवाल नहीं है, हाँ? ये O level का सवाल नहीं है? तो O level की knowledge वैसे भी assumed होती है। हम्म, yes। इसे मैं वैसे बता रहा हूँ। हाँ, but this is this is, yeah, like basically कह रहे हैं आपने calcium metal डाला sulfuric acid में, सही है? और हुआ क्या? कि calcium के ऊपर ना एक crust बन गई। तो calcium metal के ऊपर basically a solid started forming, which is calcium sulfate. और उसकी वजह से रिएक्शन नहीं हो रहा था कैल्शियम के साथ अब सजेस्ट एन एक्सप्लेनेशन फॉर दिस ऑब्जर्वेशन कैल्शियम सल्फेट इज इनसॉल्युबल हां सो कैल्शियम सल्फेट इज एसेंशियली इनसॉल्युबल राइट इट्स और इट्स पार्शियली सॉल्युबल सो व्हाट हैपेंस इज वंस द क्रस्ट फॉर्म्स राइट इट एसेंशियली प्रोटेक्ट्स द मेटल ऑन द 
inside. This is similar to what happens with aluminum in air. Oxide layer upper ban jada, the niche wala metal preserved rata, right? So what's happened is that calcium sulfate, okay, does not does not react with H2SO4 or with sulfuric acid. And is insoluble or partially barely soluble, right? Hence it forms a hence it hence the the crust, right? Prevents or protects calcium from reaction. So prevents CA from reacting with sulfuric acid. Okay. Calcium ethane dioate is formed when calcium reacts with ethane dioic acid. The compound contains one cation and one anion. So they're saying the calcium to ethane dioate is a one is to one ratio. Right? Why? Because they, they've given that in the question. So that means if calcium got two plus charge, then ethane dioate ka kya charge hoga? Two minus. So two that minus. means eth ethane dioate jump ko formula diya hai CO2H twice is actually this. This is ethane dioic acid. Okay? CO2H twice. And what happens is that it's losing two hydrogens here to form a two minus. I am ethane dioate. Normally, carboxylic acid one minus banate, and two acid group, so two minus ion. So, yeah. so, what you have is calcium two plus and this guy. Two minus ion. Okay. Now, <clears throat> draw the dot and cross diagram of the cation present in calcium ethane dioate. Show all the electrons. Okay. So, this is a simple like thing. Just make sure you follow the instructions. What's the cation here? Calcium 2 plus. Sure. So, uska aapko, agar aapko dot and cross diagram banana hoga, calcium ke hote hai, 20 electron. So, calcium ke periodic table se dekh lena. Calcium 2 plus ke 18 electron hai. It's lost its outer two electrons. So, for the dot and cross diagram, what you have to do is this. Pella shell, dusra shell, or pitisra shell. Right? And what you have is for the dot and cross diagram, yeah, they're saying show all the electrons. All right, so you have two in the inner shell, right? That's the first shell. You have eight in the second shell. And then and eight, you have again. eight again. So that's 18 electrons. So dot and cross diagram. But a dot cross diagram, yeah. Dot bold, yeah. Dot you can use dot or you can use process over here for the electrons. That's the point. Like, up cross up dot be used curling electrons, it's acceptable, right? Many of us cross use curly, okay. And obviously, in the middle, you have the nucleus if you want to draw that. And though, what's we also have to give the overall charge. This is a poor O level ka question, you know. Draw the displayed formula of the anion present in, cal in calcium ethane dioate. I just drew it for you guys. That's the displayed formula of the anion present. Right? I've shown all the bonds over here. Next question. Calcium chlorate 1 is used as an alternative to sodium chlorate one in some household products. Suggest A use for calcium chlorate. Suggest what do we normally use chlorates for? Bleach in household products. So suggest a use man. If we're substituting it, we can also use it for bleach. Okay. The chlorate one ion is formed when cold aqueous sodium hydroxide reacts with chlorine. Write an ionic equation for this reaction. State symbols are not required. So what we have is, if you guys remember, with cold sodium hydroxide, 
Cl2 reacts with OH minus and undergoes disproportionation. Pani ke saath bhi or cold sodium hydroxide dono ke saath kya banate? Cl minus banate or ClO minus banate. Right? And H2O. So then, state symbol. So ni lekhna hum log ye is this equation balanced? No, not really. What we're gonna need is how many hydroxides will we need? Now it's balanced. We have two oxygens on both sides and two hydrogens on both sides. The chlorate on chlorate one ion is unstable and decomposes when heated. That's when hot sodium hydroxide. What do we make? Chlorate three. So what we have is deduce the oxidation, uh, chlorate 5, sorry. So deduce the oxidation number of chlorine in each species. Well, chloride ion method is straightforward. It's minus 1. That's just the charge. Or chlorate mein kya hota hai? This is chlorate 5. It's X plus 3 times minus 2 for oxygen. And the overall is just the charge. So X is equal to plus 5. Make sure you don't write 5. Make sure you write plus 5. That's the oxidation number of chlorine. In terms of electron transfer, state what happens to the chlorine in reaction in part three. So in this particular reaction, what's happening to the chlorine in terms of electron transfer? Huh? Gains and loses electrons, right? Disproportionation, the same reactant undergoes reduction and oxidation. So it gains. It's not the same chlorine atom that gains and loses electrons. Basically, ho kya rahe ke, ho, pehle wale mein plus one kyun hai? The oxidation number on chlorine. Chlorine ka x hai aur oxygen ka minus two hai, overall minus one hai. Okay, Roha? So x is equal to plus one. Na? Now, ye log oxidation number of chlorine pooch rahe, not overall charge. Chlorine is plus one. Yeah. Oxygen is minus 2, so 1 minus 2 gives you overall minus 1. So chlorine is plus 1. So over here, this is a disproportionation reaction. We say that it gains and loses electrons. Now, this is not the same chlorine atom. Basically, what if you look at For every three chlorine atoms, two of them, two of them will gain electrons, they'll undergo reduction, and one of them will lose electrons to undergo oxidation. So some from the same reactant, some of them are gaining and some of them are losing. Okay. Calcium lactate is used in some medicines. It forms when lactic acid reacts with calcium carbonate. Identify two other products if when I react lactic acid with calcium carbonate. carbonate so we're forming, cal uh, we're forming calcium lactate, which is a salt. Calcium lactate is a salt. Right? What else are we forming? Carbon dioxide and hydrogen. Hydrogen, uh, hydrogen and water, 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 uh, water. Carbon dioxide and water. Right? H2O. CO2 and H2O. It's neutralization. Metal carbonate with acid. Okay. And you or you can you can write down the names also. So that's if name, if name, then name and write it. But if identify bola hai, so you can write both. Carbon dioxide and water. CO2 and H2O. Two possible methods of making lactic acid are shown. Okay. Suggest suitable reagents and conditions for reactions one and three. So in reaction one, what we're doing is we're first converting the aldehyde to a hydroxy nitrile, and then we're making lactic acid in reaction. So reaction one may cause a reagent chain to convert the aldehyde to a hydroxy nitrile. And HCN aqueous in excess, NaCN or KCN aqueous. That's the catalyst. And you're also going to what? Heat under reflux. Right? And 
And for reaction three, reaction three may kya kar rahe? They're actually, what are they doing in reaction three? Can someone tell me. What are we doing in reaction three? Oxidation, the secondary alcohol is becoming a ketone. The secondary alcohol is becoming a ketone and the primary alcohol is becoming carboxylic acid. So we're oxidizing it. So we're saying in the second reaction, what we're doing is, what we're doing, we're using dichromate or manganate, right? We're using acidified potassium dichromate. You can say K2Cr2O7 or you can say Cr2O7 2 minus. That's fine. And heat under reflux. State the type of reaction that occurs in reaction two. In reaction two, a nitrile is converted to an acid. It's hydrolysis. Okay. I always like to say acidic hydrolysis because we are acidic conditions. Mein kar That's where we're making the acid. If it's alkaline, what becomes salt? Right? But they'll accept hydrolysis. So we can just say hydrolysis. Reaction four uses NaBH4. Identify the role of NaBH4. So reaction four, mein kya karte hai? they reduce the ketone to form a secondary alcohol again. So pehle unhone oxidize ke acid group ban gayi, phir unhone reduce karke wapas alcohol group bana di to make lactic acid. So what is the role of NaBH4? It's a reducing agent. Yes. Lactic acid has a chiral center. State what is meant by a term chiral center. Chiral center is a carbon atom, right? Tetrahedrally bonded to, tetrahedrally bonded to the tetrahedrally is implied over here, but I'll still write it down. Tetrahedrally bonded to four different atoms or groups of atoms. You can just say a carbon atom bonded to four different atoms or groups of atoms. All right. Different atoms or groups of atoms. Okay. Another way of saying what a chiral center is, is that the carbon atom has actually doesn't have any line of symmetry. It's asymmetric. Char alag alag groups hai. So it's a completely asymmetric molecule. Okay. So you'll find that in the marking scheme, but we'll just stick to the definition we've learned, which is this. The last question that we have is question four. So question four says cyclohexane is a colorless liquid used in industry to produce synthetic fibers. A reaction scheme involving cyclohexane is shown. So first cyclohexane is converted to chlorocyclohexane and then to cyclohexene, right? Reaction one involves a free radical substitution mechanism. What's the condition required for this? UV light. Ultraviolet. So UV light. Complete the table, so basically sunlight in the lab. Okay. Complete the table to give details of the mechanism. So in the first step, when we form radical, what's that called? Initiation. When we're going, when a molecule is breaking up to form radicals. Halogen molecule to stay to form radical. Propagation mein kya hota hai? Molecule and radical. Molecule and radical react to form again a radical and a molecule. So, here, which molecule is being formed? This carbon is losing a hydrogen, obviously, right? So, the molecule being made is HCl. And the second step, again, what's that? Second step is also we have molecule, radical to form molecule and radical. So, what's this step? Again, it's propagation, as Rohan mentioned as well. And then finally, we have termination. So if two radicals are combining, these two radicals are going to form a bond with each other. So what we have is yes. 
All right. Name the type of reaction that occurs in reaction two. The type of reaction that's occurring in reaction two. We're removing a hydrogen and a chlorine. What? Elimination, right? It's called elimination. It's in the name. We're eliminating HCl. The product of reaction to a cyclohexene. Cyclohexene can be converted into adipic acid, okay? Hexane dioic acid, which basically what that means is, okay, they, what they're doing is they're essentially breaking this double bond and they're making an acid group here. They're making an acid group over here and an acid group on this carbon. Don't know end carbon pe acid group. Banana. So how do I rupture this double bond to make two acid groups? Strong oxidation. What conditions are there? Hot concentrated KMnO4. Okay. Then make sure you write uh, hot concentrated. Okay. So the reagents and conditions is hot concentrated. Okay. Acidified KMnO4 or MnO4 minus. We can say KMnO4 as well. We can say KMnO4. The potassium is obviously just a spectator. Tomasha dekna hai. Suggest three main differences between the infrared spectra of cyclohexene and adipic acid. In each case, identify the bond resp responsible and its characteristic absorption range. Okay, so what are the three three main differences? Let's see. Adipic so, acid. acid is Exactly. So, adipic acid na aapke paas do acid groups hai. right? So, kaun se bonds ka farak hai? Don't say acid group. What are the different types of bonds present? Can I say ke adipic me C double bond O nahi? Which? Adipic me sorry hai or yes. as cyclohexene me nahi hai? Acid. Ek wo bond hai. Dusra bond kaun se? OH. Tisra bond? Carbon the carbon CO double bond. bond is CO. Haan, CO bhi hai. C single bond O bhi hai. Lekin wo fingerprint region me aata hai na? उसको उसका जिक्र तभी क्या करें जब बिल्कुल जरूरत पड़े वरना कोशिश करें कि 1500 एंड अबव की बात करें सो ओवर हियर इफ यू लुक एट 1500 एंड अबव लेट मी गो टू द दिस इज द न्यू डेटा बुकलेट बट द रेंजेस आर द सेम ओके व्हाट वी हैव इज दिस गाय इज इन द फिंगरप्रिंट रीजन बिलो 1500 सो वी ओनली टॉक अबाउट इट इफ यू रियली नीड टू इट्स बेटर टू टॉक स्टिक टू द गाइस अबव 1500 सो वी हैव सी डबल बॉन्ड सी ओनली एन एसिड Okay, fifteen hundred to sixteen eighty. Uh, not in only an acid, sorry, only in the alkene. And then we have C double bond O, and the OH bond. These are both present in the acid. So these are the three bonds. So we will see over here. We will see C double bond C, okay, bond, right? And we're going to see an absorption at from cyclohexene. From cyclohexene, but not, but not a deep acid, right? At what range? Fifteen hundred to sixteen eighty. This is from the data booklet. This value. Okay. The second one that we would see is C double bond O from a deep acid. But not cyclohexene at approximately seventeen hundred ka aspas of the right here up carboxyl seventeen sixteen seventy to seventeen forty wave numbers. Jo bhi value di bhi hogi, ab bas core data box se chaap. And the last one is we have the OH, right, from a deepic acid, but not in cyclohexene, right? At again, OH, OH from a carboxylic acid is at is at twenty five hundred to three thousand wave. So you just write that peak number down. Twenty-five hundred to three thousand wave numbers. 